So this video is going to be about uh, completing proofs with uh, triangle congruencies and then CPCTC and kind of just going through some of the thinking that goes into it. And so I want to show you the method I use. Notice I don't number the statements or reasons because uh, I don't know quite where it's going to be. And I also do some ignoring. And so one of the things that I want to ignore is what it says to prove because I've learned pretty much that if I'm if I'm trying to prove something there, it's going to come about with me showing the triangles are congruent. So I look over here on the triangles and I, I see my given information. I always want to put that down first. Y A is congruent to B A, I'm making sure that's right in the picture, and that's a side. And angle B is congruent to angle Y, and that's an angle. So I have that. I can put that in sentence form or write it out steps here so I have an angle and a side in that order I need another side right here or I need another angle well when I look at the picture whenever I see a, a V like that or an X like that I know that the angles across from each other are vertical angles I know they're congruent that's gonna give me another angle so I'll have angle side angle so I just thought through that without writing it so I go back to write it now so angle Y a Z is congruent to angle B A C and that's the vertical angles theorem or you can also write it as vertical angles congruent that's how the theorem shows up sometimes so again I like to label in my proof where those things show up so I have an angle and a side and an angle in that order so yes, the triangles are congruent. So I'm kind of answering some of these questions. The missing part was the vertical angles. The given information was on there. What triangles are congruent? So I'm going to follow the order here. And it doesn't matter for the first triangle. Y, A, Z, I can pick any order I want. It does matter for the second one. So I went from one tick mark to the side to the pink. So one tick mark to the side to the pink. And I kind of intentionally picked that order the last time there to make sure those would line up. So that's angle side angle. Now I can go back and uncover that and see if AZ is congruent to BC. Then I've done all the hard work. The easy part is CPCTC. And again, if you think about when we start out with the definitions of congruence and triangles, our original definition was all the sides and angles are congruent. So if we can get back to this step, we can always finish the proof. Okay, let's go to another one. Again, I'm going to cover this up. So I don't want it to be a distraction. And I want to look at the picture and see if they have stuff marked in there. They have parallel lines marked on there. That's good. And I like parallel lines. They have angles. So that stuff's all on there. So that, that's something I'm going to use. So this gives me an angle. So angle R is congruent to angle S. That's an angle. That's given. Again, if you'd like to write this in statements, you can. You don't have to write it out in sentences if you if you rather like it. But I think this method works pretty well here. And I have parallel lines, which also often tells me congruent angles. So if you extend these lines a little bit and you say, okay, I already got these angles congruent. Is there anything else in my triangle? Well, I have I have some Z's going on here, so there's a Z right there. So I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. So my parallel lines are useful. I'm just going to write that in as given. It doesn't tell me anything yet. What tells me is the parallel lines tell me that I have congruent angles there. So I have a congruent angle. So that, that means I, I'm going to be able to say that, but I have two angles. I need something else. Well, I always think about the triangles. If they're touching, if they're touching, they share a side. That side is in both triangles. It's the same in both triangles. So I can mark it congruent. So now I have an angle, an angle, and a side in that order. Angle, angle, side. That's my property. So I, I kind of just mentally thought about I know the triangles are congruent by angle angle side, so I can go from there to finish the proof. 
So let's go back through it. I knew these angles were congruent. Angle SQT was congruent to angle RTQ because we had parallel lines and parallel lines when you have this Z alternate interior angles are congruent. So that is an angle. Again, I like to keep track of it. And then we said if we if the triangles are touching, you're always going to use the property. It says QT is congruent to QT. Some people are picky and, and have you reverse the order. That's the reflexive property. Again, when, the way you remember reflexive is think about what you look at when you look in the mirror. You see yourself. It's the same thing. So now that's a side. So I either have angle side angle or angle angle side. Just be careful. Those are the ones that are confused. That's angle angle side because the side is not in between. So I'm going to go SQT is congruent to triangle. Make sure you go in the right order. I started with the double tick mark there. So RTQ. Be careful. Those reverse it around a little bit. Now I can rip off the point there and say angle QTS. So follow the order here. QTS is that congruent to TQR? Yes, it is. So therefore, angle QTS is congruent to angle TQR CPCTC. Always follows a congruent triangle statement. Okay. Do a couple more, a little review of some of our other properties we've seen. Covering up the proof. I don't want to see it. I want to see it. I know I'm proving triangles congruent. So let's just look at this a different way and say, I'm ignoring the given. I know that the triangles touch, so I know I'm going to be using reflexive. I have a side there. So now I look at my given and I say, AD is congruent to CD. That's another side. I either need an angle in between or the third side. Um, and so I'm, that's where, where I'm going to my given. Segment BD bisects segment AC. So if I look on my picture, BD is this right here, and it's bisecting AC, which means cutting in half. So that's, that's also going to give me a side. So now I just have to put that into words. Just for the sake of time on this video, I'm skipping the given step. You can write down the given here. And the one given doesn't do anything except for provide me with one of the sides. So I'll put that there with the ghost given. Um, then I said this BD was congruent to itself. I always have to state that. Reflexive property. So now I have my two sides. Now I have to... We, we know that bisectors cut things in half. We just have to say it. Why? Because that's what a bisector does. That's the definition of bisector. So AB is congruent to BC. That gives me another side. Definition of bisector, or you could say segment bisector. And that basically comes from the, uh, the given that we had a bisector there. Everything is kind of connected. So I have three sides. My triangles are congruent. ABD is congruent to CBD. Order does matter there. And that's side, side, side. Now, rip off. Let's see, does angle ABD, CBD? Yep, I just proved it. Therefore, angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. CPCTC always follows. So again, this always follows. Here you're showing these connections. You can do that in words if you want. You can bullet point it, but the statement of reason gives you a pretty nice way to line it up. Okay, we're going to do the whole last one and let you finish this. But just looking at the picture, what do you know? This time, you're going to have to say more of the information, but everything you mark on the picture can go down here. So when I mark 
I know those are congruent. How am I going to write that down here? I have a midpoint, which makes, it's the midpoint of, C is the midpoint of AE. What does that tell me? It tells me that's congruent. How am I going to write that down there? So now I have an angle on the side. What else do I need? I need another angle. Well, I have parallel lines. Extend it. Draw in some congruent stuff. How do we know that? It tells me an angle. It's going to give me angle, side angle. How do I know it? I write it down here. Let your proof come together that way. And your last step, you, you ignore it. You don't worry about what it says you got to prove. Prove the triangle's congruent and you'll be good. Thanks for playing. Finish this problem. We'll check it in class.